DApps, short for decentralized apps, make up the layer of Web3 that we interact with most. They let us trade tokens, play blockchain games, borrow crypto, or even vote in DAOs. But here's the question, are DApps really decentralized? To answer that, we first need to dissect what a DApp actually is. At first glance, a DApp just looks like a fancy crypto website. But under the hood, it's made up of many layers, from the front end and back end to the blockchain itself. Let's start with what is decentralized, smart contracts and the public blockchains they run on. Smart contracts, as you may already know, are bits of code deployed on a blockchain. Once launched, they run automatically and are immutable. They execute whatever logic they were programmed to do without having to ask anyone for permission. They're the backbone of dApps, allowing things like transferring tokens, verifying data, or executing trades. And because they're on a public blockchain, anyone can interact with them. However, here's the catch. Most users don't interact directly with smart contracts. They use its front end, typically a nice and user-friendly website that looks and feels like any other on the internet. This is the part you'll actually see. The buttons, charts, fancy animations. These are built using standard web tools like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But to actually do something, like signing a transaction or checking your balance, the front end needs to talk to the blockchain. And to do that, you'll need a node. Which brings us to the back end. Front ends usually connect to the blockchain through a provider, services like Infura, Alchemy, or QuickNode. These are companies which run full nodes so you don't have to, but relying on them introduces centralization. If the node provider goes down or sensors requests or information, your dApp is essentially offline, even if the smart contracts are still live. Then there's hosting, where the dApp's front end lives. This is another common point of centralization. Most dApps are hosted just like regular websites on centralized services like Amazon Web Services or Cloudflare. This is convenient for developers, but one legal notice or technical failure, and poof, your dApp could vanish. One solution is to use decentralized hosting platforms like IPFS, the Interplanetary File System. Similar to blockchains, IPFS stores files across a network of independent nodes making censorship much harder. This helps keep the dApp's website, the actual interface, online and accessible, but adoption is still limited. Then there's all the data that's created when users interact with smart contracts, like transactions, balances, or token ownership. This data is stored on the blockchain, but blockchains weren't built for fast or complex queries. To make that data usable, like displaying a user's full trading history or token balances, you'll need to index it. Indexing means organizing data so that it can be quickly searched or displayed. The usual way is for the project to run a private server, scan the blockchain, and serve the results from a centralized database. But you'll have to trust the server, and it's still at risk of being taken down. A more decentralized indexing tool is the graph an open network that organizes blockchain data for easy querying with no single point of failure. Another key layer is oracles, like Chainlink. These are necessary to feed real-world data like prices or weather to smart contracts. But because they rely on external sources, they introduce yet another trust layer. And let's not forget wallets like MetaMask or Phantom, which help manage your keys and sign transactions. These are essential and largely self-custodial, but since they're built by centralized companies, you still depend on them for access and updates. So what does this all mean? In practice, most dApps are only partially decentralized. Their smart contracts may be unstoppable, but their websites can go down, off-chain data can be manipulated, and access points can be censored. Building a fully decentralized app would mean smart contracts deployed on a public blockchain, a front-end hosted on a decentralized file system, decentralized indexing and storage, and direct wallet-to-node interactions without relying on middlemen. Not exactly a walk in the park, and probably not very user-friendly. So most teams make trade-offs between usability and how much decentralization they're really aiming for. 
Decentralization matters, but it lies on a spectrum, and it isn't just black and white. Want to dive even deeper? Check out our earlier video on that right here.